Welcome in everyone to Unite Mike's Mayhem Season 2 Finals. That's right. The grand conclusion to our Season 2 is about to begin. I already see everyone popping off in chat. Do snacks. Thank you so much for joining me as always and, you know, one-upping my attire yet again. Well, you said red. You didn't say how red. Let's get That's this true. festive season underway. <laughs> Unite Mike's Mayhem Season 2 Final Zoinks. We finally made it. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of solid squads made it this far, my friend. Oh, yeah. Our most stacked event that we've ever had in Mayhem history. That's a no question. Uh, we have some incredible teams. Of course, Ascended has got the invite back for winning our mm -hmm. previous season. They got an immediate invite to the finals. They are the first team that's going to be playing tonight. They're squaring off against the Brazilian Wonder Kids. We got Sheese on the other side. Yeah, so uh, she's really uh, showed up and showed out, uh, made quick work of, uh, uh, I believe it was week one, was it not, uh, of Unite Mike's Mayhem in season two? Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited to have them. Listen, she's is one of the teams that you and I didn't get to cast at Worlds, at least I did not, excuse me, uh, and getting to cast them in week one and getting to cast them again against some of their would have been potential opponents is awesome like this is this is essentially a a, a you pick them from uh the ucs uh world championships so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm for it i and i yeah you know, it's gonna be a show it's gonna have absolute show what a great way to end season two and what a great way to uh lead everyone into the holiday week yeah oh i cannot wait yes thank you to all the teams for actually showing up and participating in the holiday week as well it's a uh yeah i know it's a tough time to get scheduling done we had our own snafus on unite mics end, but we mm -hmm. were able to solve it all get another That's season insane. competitive unite in so i'm uh i'm pumped about that but the action doesn't just stop at this first game our second game that we have upcoming is also a certified omega banger we have clash mm -hmm. versus ttv uh you know we are dipping outside of the North America region for one of those teams. Clash looking incredible in their run in week number two. And just yesterday TTV went in a spotless record to their victory in week number three. So two titans of the scene for a long long time waiting in the wings for their second match. Yeah, and um, I've mentioned it before. I'll mention it again. It's one of the rehash of the best best of three we had in season one. Mm. at least arguably could be considered the best one if not the best so i'm glad that they're meeting again in the unite mike season two finals uh to see who can cr be crowned champion and ultimately last team we'll touch on which we didn't touch on too too much when we were talking about that matchup ascended your world champions yeah. they're here they got the, they got the express lane they got the free ride to to this finals for another mm -hmm. crack of the money and and retain their title uh and that's not something they're willing to let go too easily i don't think Oh, not at all. Now, what their roster is actually going to look like tonight, I don't know for sure. <laughs> I know mm -hmm. that it has been uh, doing some retooling in the offseason, but also just in the last few hours, I've been told. Sure. Uh, but I know they got a squad of five. I know they're ready to play, so I know they are excited for that. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention before we mention prize pool and then get into our first number game is yep. we do have one exciting title sponsor for tonight, a mm -hmm. wonderful, wonderful streamer that you all should be checking out. That is the Chad 69 with three is a part of the V uh, has donated to the prize pool tonight to boost it up which is awesome you have to go check out their stream for sure I will make sure to throw some links in the chat shortly as soon as we head into game but check out that stream thank you so much for your sponsorship of tonight the chat now anyone else in chat if you want to support these four teams and add a little bit of an additional carrot at the end of uh, the mayhem stick if you will uh, you can donate to exclamation mark prize pool every donation going to that GoFundMe. We'll boost up Unite Mike's Mayhem finale prize pool. Check it out. Send some love towards these four teams. Make mm -hmm. the competition that much fiercer. I Man, we got glitch in the, glitch in the chat too. We glitch? got everybody tuning up. Turning out. Unite Mike's Mayhem. Not going to let anybody down. Season 2 underway. Are we ready to go? We got Bruv in here. Jess. Shoo! Sheesh. Everybody's turning up. Listen. She, and that's who's showing down first, right? She. <laughs> it's going down against Ascended. That's who we're kicking this thing off with. Are we ready for a coin flip, Zoinks? Or Absolutely. do we need to spit a yarn a little bit more? No, I think we're all set. These teams are ready to kick off draft mode. So she's is going to be heads. Ascended is going to be tails. Who gets the option of A or B on the draft side? Here we go. It is going to be heads. All right. I don't think I don't think she's has lost a coin flip. 
<laughs> Baby Mazo is just different when it comes to it comes to coin flips. All right, um, they are gifted with it, so I'm gonna give them the option for draft. I'm gonna pull up that screen. Actually, I think this should work. Yes, we're good to go. That's awesome. Uh, we have banned in the game. We aren't quite using it quite yet, obviously. But this is what we're gonna look at. Format is gonna be a very straightforward drafting system. Each team is gonna get one ban. We're going back and forth in terms mm -hmm. of picks and bans. One ban for each team. First pick gets one pick, but every pick after that is going to be a double pick, giving a little bit of a chance to that team going in the second spot. Yep, and we talked about it last night, so if you're here with us last night, you'll be uh, going through a little Groundhog's Day action, but for those of you that are joining in or haven't caught Unite Mike's Mayhem up to this point, uh, Sableye's really been the menace, right? So if you're in first pick, uh, first ban, first pick slot, you have the really strong option of banning something that's very pointed towards the other team and forcing the other team to either let you have the opportunity to choose Sableye or mm -hmm. ban Sableye right there. So you really put them on the button to make a move. So that's why, in my opinion, in this particular season, first ban, first pick is where you want to be. And nothing new, <laughs> the, <laughs> the egg, the egg, the big egg itself, Chansey getting uh, banned out of the gates by She's. Um, no, no curiosity there. That's just <laughs> the best support Pokemon going. Get it off the, get it out off the roster uh, day one. Yes, absolutely. Well, Ascended sticking uh, to the proverbial guns of our games right now. Sableye also getting banned out here. So, Blissey and Sableye, the two most notorious banned Pokemon. But she's is sending a gift, a Christmas gift directly to Dupe Snacks. Mamoswine is locked in for the Brazilian squad. We love seeing Sato on this Pokemon. They play it so, so well. I know they've been mm -hmm. grinding this one in the offseason, too. After our tournament, on week number one I actually DM Salta and started talking to him about his Mamoswine swine a little bit he said he's been like practicing you know custom game in game like ranked ladder everything they can to learn the ins and outs of Pokemon and it is absolutely showing well it showed in spade like you said about four weeks ago when we got mm -hmm. to see them uh, <laughs> run it through Ascended, however, I'm um, going to have the opportunity to choose some very unique Pokemon that sometimes get banned out, like Dodrio, things of that nature. Um, Ascended might look to square off their support and tank picks out of the gate, maybe go with a little bit of a Snorlax Mime type action, which we've seen uh, these teams select. Mime still very, very potent, very good up front, can deal a lot of damage. Um, great Unite move as well. So, you know, no, no slouches on Ascended, even mm -hmm. with uh, some substitutes, I'm sure. They could throw me in there. They could put a ham sandwich in one of their <laughs> slots, and they'd still have a pretty good shot at winning. So, Cheese is up against it, but putting themselves in a position here by banning Blissey and taking uh, the best defender uh, the best defender going, at least in Unite Mike's Mayhem, it seems to be that way. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, and the interesting thing about picking a defender so early is that the metagame we've been seeing has shifted a lot to the viability of double defender on the other side. Mm -hmm. So you can't even just forego your defender pick until later if you're ascended because you know that she's will just pick up the other top tier ones and really make your job that much harder because that is a viable option. Mm -hmm. uh, ascended has locked in their next picks, though. Snorlax and Cinderace are going to be the Pokemon they are selecting. I think that may give us one specific clue to who is going to be the uh the one of the players on the ascended squad tonight yeah well it looks like uh, old book the jungle book showed <laughs> up no Mowgli in this one they're going for the straight fire power and the fire rabbit um love seeing jungle book love casting jungle book they're a very unique and skilled player that uh really leans into their skill set and understanding of this character specifically to create tons and tons of value for the squad so locking that up and guaranteeing a Jungle Book, uh, one of their pocket picks, not a bad look for all Ascended. That is true. Well, she is going to lock in the Dodrio, which I, uh, <laughs> I'm very excited to see. <laughs> Baby Mazo <laughs> is nasty with it on this Pokemon. The other selection is definitely a surprise to me. Eldegoss is going to be the next uh, is going to be the next pick for the side of Sheets. It is certainly a Pokemon that has multiple routes. You can go full damage build on the Eldegoss, especially with the addition of Rapid Fire Scarf. This Pokemon loves to press the A button early and often, so that is going to be a viable option for them but the supporting value you can give to a mammoth slime with just constant cotton guards is also something you can't ignore yeah absolutely not i mean they're not choosing this pokemon so high because it doesn't have value right 
Sure. Elder God was looking to do some work. I'm kind of surprised we didn't see something like a Zoomeril, but that'll give the opportunity for Ascended to choose something like that. Of course, I mean, if Overlord's in the house, you could have the sword, you could have the Azumarill, you could have even uh, the Lucario, you could have uh, Zarina, which is mm-hmm. they're an absolute mutant on that Pokemon as well. Um, so Ascended still with plenty, plenty options. And that's what's really fun when you're looking at two incredibly high octane teams. Almost every Pokemon looks good, right? Yeah. And you can make a, a good justification in case based on team composition, why that makes sense. So Ascendant has sure. the doors wide open for him, and uh, she's making some very unique picks out of the gate, but they've got a target in mind without a doubt. Yeah, I think one of those things, I see some people shouting out in chat, Leaf Tornado is a decent option on this Pokemon. Yes, especially into Cinderace. Two seconds of blind on that Pokemon where all their auto attacks miss is a very pivotal moment in some final team fights. So that could be a huge use. Honestly, what I'm seeing right now is Mamoswine and Eldegoss have a decent synergy because of their Unite moves, right? They're... Yep nigh on undefeatable <laughs> when using their unite moves so much hp given back hp bars reset so many shields given to the rest of the squad uh jesus could be a very tough team to out team fight in those final moments as long as they can reliably utilize those unite moves ascended locking in their next two picks we have hoopa and blastoise adding on oh, yeah. to this world championship oh, oh, team oh, oh, oh. Oh, listen ascend is on something different uh-huh. They're, 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 they're on the galaxy brain action. Laz is in there crunching the numbers with their TI 89. They're just going crazy. <laughs> that thing is sparking out the sides. They're punching in so much data or whatever. Um, <laughs> dude, this is not a, this is not a decision you make lightly and without full intention here. So Blastoise and Hoopa coming out might be the sign that Ascended has something a little bit stronger on the horizon than maybe you and I have considered. Blastoise, I think is fine right you throw that in the top path it it has to take a rotation of the central eventually if it really wants to be viable but you can throw it in the top path it can hold its own it's gonna have a real tough time holding its own against these next picks though azumarill is locked in from she's which is a pokemon they loved playing in their week number one as well and this one was a staple pick glaceon being locked in for them this central area pokemon is a freak of nature in the lobby when it's in she's hands you're looking at that uh, that lineup there. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Ascendant's going to be able to catch a lot of resets off the Hoopa, assuming they're going uh, hyperspace hole. That being mm-hmm. said, if they can cycle their resets and they can get to the back, if they can get behind that Mammoth Swine effectively, oh they can run rough shot through this team. <laughs> they yeah. really can. Um, so right. she's, she's is going to have to fight front to back, stay committed to it, and they're going to have to stay... Not too tight together, of course, but you have to stay pseudo grouped up to make sure that your Glaceon doesn't get buckled. You know, Mazo on the Dodria doesn't get caught out either. So an Espeon rounding it out. I saw somebody in chat, but uh, Espeon Trust. Here we go. So <laughs> there you go. Espeon Trust pulled out. And there there they are with the anchor pick. Yeah. And Espeon is not a Pokemon we've seen selected a lot, Zoinks. No. I personally, I think for good reason. Uh, however, uh, I know Toon is filling in for the attacker role on Ascended tonight. So um, good luck with whatever server they find. However, they are going to be running it in game and they have been loving the Espeon lately. So if Toon can find value on it, I think that there is some credence to what you were saying at the top of this draft. The ability that they have to pull off any kind of Pokemon and pick and synergize well is going to be there. Now, the Hoopa, I mean, Elo is playing the Hoopa, right? They have made mm-hmm. <laughs> many people fear their name on this Pokemon. So they have the skill to back up whatever they're trying to pull off in this game. I'm just very interested in how they are going to try to take it. What angle they're going to want to bring the Hoopa in. Portal resets, f- a fine option in my opinion. But I mean, is there any credence to trick Phantom Force playing around a Blastoise who's rapid spinning in and then you get him out? I don't know. There's multiple ways to play it. Let's take a look at how we are building the items for these teams. Yeah, That's a Drain Lord. Crown. Drain Crown <laughs> on Falb. <laughs> Let's go. There's just no fear on Falb putting the Drain <laughs> Crown on. Uh, Lel going to be picking up the Eldegoss. Mazo, of course, on Dodrio Soto. Uh, absolute legend on the Mammoth Swine uh, in week one. And uh, uh, Gizen. Geisen. Gizen. Geisen. Somebody in chat help me uh, remember right. how that's yeah, pronounced. Yeah, chat, please say Geisen I'm or pretty, Gizen, but we'll figure it out. Pretty sure it's Geisen. 
Yeah. Uh, in there on the Glaceon. Let's take a look uh, real quick. Jungle Book, uh, Rampa Fire Scarf, Tune with all the glasses and the focus band. Elo, of course, no question on the Hoopa and Slash yeah. picking up the old Snorlax. Jungle Book sticking to the full heal as well an item that got a nerf i mean not that recently anymore mm -hmm. uh, at this point in time but i'm surprised to see that especially with not too much crowd control but the way that dodrio is played these days that high jump kick giving you that momentary stun very similar to blaze kick honestly uh it could be a problem that they are trying to get ahead of immediately by hitting that item uh, so yeah a good option to have on your cinderace tune rocking the espion is mostly what i want to keep attention to not stacking i believe double glass but not the uh, the extra large version mm -hmm. of Sudso. So running that focus band, a bit more defensive tool to have in path. Makes a lot of sense to me. Espeon will be at a little bit of a deficit compared to its Glaceon evolution on the other team, mostly because I'm quite confident that Gizan is going to be headed into the central area immediately at the start of this game. Yep, uh, somebody mentioned in chat, but it was a good shout out. That Mamo is stacking, and that's something we saw Salto do in week one. Uh, Salto do in week one, um, and not surprised that they're running it back here. They're pretty good about flexing through their different um, held items. So that's something to specifically on that character to keep track of. And Mazo working their way around, keeping that sprint bar up, and they're splitting that central because they want some power spikes. <laughs> yeah, Dodrea Pokemon that can evolve and then start to absolutely take over a game. Fab with a pretty greedy yeah. score there. The A button pressing from Overlord and Elo too much for them to deal with. A knockout early in this game. You didn't even feed for more than one stack. That's a tough one to deal with this early on in the game. Did you see that Astonish in the Dark by Elo just to chip up Lel and make sure they couldn't seal that Bunnelby? That's the type of world champion caliber stuff we're watching here. Mm -hmm. uh, Slash and Toon doing not not too bad of a job down here in the face of Salto and Mazo. Mazo just hanging out, seeing if there was a good opportunity. They're only level 3. They need to farm up a little bit so they can make an impact. Yeah, there we go. Elo hiding out, trying to block Lel again here. This experience share, Eldegoss, a very common pick, but it is going to be tough to get to that level four when Overlord and Elo are taking every last bit of farm. Eject button used early. Falb now has the pressure to try to push onto this pad. Yeah, Lel's getting low. They're retreating a little bit. Overlord hoarding down the pad pretty well. Elo picking up a berry. Gizan getting dusted here. Overlord gets the KO. That's huge. That's good experience uh, spike and not one that uh, little Squirtle gets to see too, too early. Valve trying to hold it down. Lel's still on the retreat, pressing the A button as hard as they can. Maybe the B button in this case. Elo and Overlord are on the hunt. Falb is one level above, but on a two-on-one, they've got a real chance here. As Falb is chunked, and maybe they're just going to go score some points and let that experience go over to the Ascended squad. Yeah, there we go. Also, thank you so much, Shrogex, for the five gifted in chat. That means the world to us at Unite Mics. It's all going straight to charity, so thank you so much for that. Now, yeah, you were right. Overlord on this War Turtle doing extremely well in the top path, and Elo is running that trick to go along with it. Do you get caught up by Gizan, who's clearing their central area so incredibly fast, taking one buff every single time, which might be a little suboptimal in some people's eyes, but the ability to get in and get out and get these knockouts is making every single rotation worth it. Yeah, just a real quick look by Mazo, able to get their points and go up and get some of these central birds here, and now they're collapsing. Ascended is collapsing. Mazo's kind of chunked. They're down to about 40% HP. They're moving forward. They're seeing Book. They think they can convert. Toon Slim misses with their engagement, and Gizan comes in, cleans up the trash, sorts out the central area player. Jungle Book Overlord struggling to get that berry. <laughs> they lock it down and get it. Let's see if they can get some points, and they're desperate to score this 30. They want it in a bad way. Gizan here working through. Sato level 5, not looking too bad either in the early stages of this one. Toon at some point in this game has hit level 8, which is an absurdly quick pace for this Espeon. The lane must have been going extremely well for them, already mm -hmm. having their, uh, well, I guess not having their Unite Mover utilizing it already, but still so quick to that level spike. Incredible work by them. Overlord, not quite the same, but Blastoise is a little bit slower off the hop. Regilecki being shown a little bit of presence by Sheese, but Slash Cannon Toon immediately showing their attention towards the Regirock, knowing that Jungle Book is closing in for the secure at that level 9. Yeah, and Southtown, not a not a stranger of trying to make miracle plays here. They tried to get it done. Their icicle crash is just a bit short. Now they're caught on the backside of nowhere. Ascend is going to have no problem sorting out Southtown. Doesn't matter how stout that Pokemon is. They get sorted real quick. Foul put the pressure on Elo. They're going to try and get this Bunnelby and buy some space for the squad to clear this Regilecki. They want it, but it's getting barely picked up by She's there. Geese and still sorting that out. Overlord, surprisingly lower level than we usually see them. Foul using the Unite move to pick up the berry, and now they're fighting on the backside. Great engagement by Foul to buy time and close out that goal zone great play
Yeah, not an incredibly large overdunk, but still that goal zone being broken so early on in the game is going to give them a nice avenue to try to push in Regilecki for a second time. Ooh. Elo barely making it out there with, oh, I, I want to say negative HP probably. Falb clearing away those central pieces. Oh my word, Toon Slim's damage is absurd. Those <laughs> hits are landing and they are making them pay for it. My ACU Knight moves to keep Mazo locked in place. Mazo's incapacitated and knocked out. Toon wins an incredible 1v1 in the mid. And a great engage by Slash on Salto to keep them from getting the KO on the Espeon. Once it got chunked and real low and did all its hard work, it go ahead and gets out. Slash is like, I got you, friend. Don't you worry about it. You get on out of there. Salto's still looking to put engage on, on Slash Can, though. Doing some good work, but it's ELO there for the support to clean up the trash. That's the type of character they play. That's the type of play they make. <laughs> Overlord getting chased down yet again. They have Hydro Typhoon. Only going to knock up one uh, dodge from the Glaceon. Gets them out of harm's way. Leaf Tornado to slow, blind, and get a bit of an escape, but Slash Can, relentless in their pursuit, is going to push them all the way to the midpoint. Has to put up block. You do not want to be taking full stacked Icicle Spears to the face. Little Leaf Tornado get Geese in some speed to see if they can trace down Slash, but it looks like they might be giving up on that chase. No, they actually get it in tandem with the Elder Goss. Good look as Ascendant has two players down, and she's trying to put some pressure on this goal zone. Geese and Lel going to make their way out. Maybe a Leaf Tornado to help Geese and escape as they're looking to take some buffs for themselves. I like this attention to always split pushing there in the top path because that makes Overlord's job of getting those uh, side and DDDs easy so much more difficult. Now they can't return onto them. Gizem with the Unite move just for the escape route. They're going to get it, but a 40 points is going to go into that top path from Overlord. Nice play by them. Yeah, this game is working on razor thin margins. About a 22 point difference between these squads as she's in Ascendant is working up and we see Slash and Book going ahead and hopping through that ELO portal. They want this basement Reggie and I think they're <laughs> going to get it as she's is nowhere in the stratosphere of that thing. So unless we see another Miracle Salto play here, we, oh. they might actually get it and that was not that badly timed. Just a, just a bit shy Zoinks of a Salto Miracle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it forced out a Unite move out of the Cinderace though. That is a Unite move there not going to have if they tried to swing back and go for a different objective like onto Regilecki or something like that. So sorry about that, everybody. We'll get that sorted out in a sec. Uh, big block though for Slash Can, keeping, <laughs> keeping Falb locked in place. They are knocked mm -hmm. out, but the price was paid. Regilecki secured, and they're going to be moving towards that goal zone. But with everybody from Azenda there to defend, it doesn't seem like it's going to find any purchase on any goal zone. An immediate retreat from Sheez, and they need to be clearing some wild Pokemon. They are losing the experience race pretty hard here in this game. Yeah, and in the middle, we have Overlord engaging on Gizen, Gizen, excuse me, and they get the KO there. Now, Salto's trying to make Overlord pay for that insolence here as Mazo <laughs> gets chunked huge by Elo and Overlord. They're working really well in tandem. They're big time engaged. Can they close the door? That Surf clips up Mazo, and they get the KO. Are you kidding me? Overlord still stands. Heavy Slam comes through, sorts out Salto, and now it's Lel showing up for the fight, and they're going, ha, 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 ha. Let's get out of here if I can as Elo and Slash are putting the pressure on in a big time way and Lel is not going to make it out of that. <laughs> I'm in danger at the back of the bus beam. Unfortunate for Eldegoss. They are locked in place and knocked out. Too much damage to contest with. The huge power spike from Toon in this game is actually absurd. We're going to have to check the numbers after this one because I have not seen an Espeon dishing out as much as they are in this game so far. But the constant split pushing that Dodrio can provide that Guizan on the Glacier on has been able to surface as well as Falb and the Azumarill getting a little bit of sex here and there. It means that she's technically has the lead right now. 179 to 170. They're keeping that points lead. It's not a large one by any means and with only a few seconds on this Reggie, it doesn't look like they're going to find any large source of experience in the next few minutes. Yeah, and unfortunately, all of their wild Pokemon on their side of the map have been taken. So if they want experience, they have to go through the body and go through the, the core of Ascended Squad and get some KOs. But we've got Rayquaza right on the doorstep, and Ascend is not looking to give up any real estate. No, Ascended has a pretty solid last hitting comp as well. Snorlax, even uh, the... Hoopa going to be providing a lot of stuns as well as just vision for Cinderace and then the Reddit bush hero themselves Jungle Book hiding out in a bush is going to have the Blazing Bicycle Kick for a nice bit of secure. Blastoise for the knockup working in tandem is going to be a good asset. I love to play for Mazo though. Constant back caps puts them up to 235 to 170 in short order.
Yeah, and Salto uh, actually able to get Slash down to pretty low HP. Overlord fighting for 50%, and Salto engages on them. They're coming through. Espeon Unite comes out, and they're trying to find a KO, but it's a Cinderace that goes down. The book is down early. The Hoopy Unite is up, but Elo's getting dusted here. They're trying to throw all the Space Fists, all the Space Beams uh, into the face of Xyz, but they're coming through. The pressure is on. Finally, Lel goes down, but they're keeping up and keeping up pace. That's a Hydro Typhoon coming through. Chips up one, chips up two. Two players down for Ascendant. Now it's Giz in the next one on the chopping block. Can Overlord close the door on them? One HP. They're diving through they're diving through oh, the surf clips the side that might be the difference <laughs> Gizan makes it out and now elo has to retreat but sato's looking to cut them off they're looking to engage on the bo the goal zone here sato gets surfed out gets pushed out big heavy slam tries to buy time here and now all of a sudden is going to be back up off respawn overlord is oh going to be able to go down sato survives the the jungle book unite move comes out gets the ko and now the tides are swinging back the other way but the score is 311 to 170. Uh, nice leaf tornado by Lel to give Jungle Book just a br little bit of breathing room. Requests it down to about half HP. Slash is knocked out through block. An absurd Elo amount of damage. Just Fab keeps up the KO streak at two. Make that three. And Toon is the next one up. She's on a running rampage in the middle path. Yeah, and they're going straight to score here. They're not going to mess Absolutely. with Rayquaza. 20, under 30 seconds left in the game. This is going to be a huge hundo burger right here in Ducket time. And it's up to Book, or excuse me, Overlord to try and make the save. The surf is too late. And now Gizan's just trying to find the retreat because their respawn timer is going to be a decade. Overlord's <laughs> trying to seal it out, but now all their attention's being split. And that's exactly what they want to do. They want to get everybody's attention onto what they shouldn't be doing, which is on Rayquaza or trying to score. And Giz is going to take this one. Giz is going to take this one. Despite the experience disparity, they came through and took an absolute body bag of a team fight, Zoinks. When I thought, when I saw Ascended getting Jungle Book back in that team fight, Unite move from range and that re-engage gets themselves one knockout, but an amazing Eldegoss Leaf Tornado to cover their escape. Of course, the attention of Ascended has to be on the Rayquaza. They're playing from too much of a point deficit for it to be anything else. And the re-engage from the Azumarill and Dotreo and just the big bodies on Sheez gives them the avenue for a great game one victory. One to zero is our scoreline after the first. Are you kidding me? 411 to 170. Look at that scoreline all the way through until that 179 started breaking off. And that was pretty much off the back of Mazo. Going back cap, going back cap, going back cap. <laughs> we, we, you know, you look at Salto's um, stat line there, but you have to give them all the credit in the world at the beginning of that engagement. They were able to chunk Slash Can in a big way. They were able to keep Overlord right at 50, uh, 50 percent HP, right out of the gate, which bought all the time in the world for Giesen and Falb to absolutely collapse on Book and remove them from the equation immediately. Mm -hmm. And after that, Elo was forced to unite with no real value of anybody portaling in. And of course, then the Focus Fire could go on Toon Slim and they knocked them out. Systematic order after that. Yes, Book came back, but it was just... Um, too much for them to handle and she's puts together a mean team fight despite low on experience and gets it done holy smokes dude yeah what a game uh, so my question how jungle book got knocked out at the beginning of that team fight anyways but we'll we'll cover that as a vod review maybe and figure out why the cinderace was that far forward uh but incredible damage numbers across the board we were just looking at it tune with eighty four thousand on espion mm -hmm. i mean uh, you probably don't need to worry about that one getting counter picked but it certainly was a strong asset for them in game number one now we are headed into draft of game number two very shortly here. Uh, it's going to be ascended with the coin flip victory, if you will. The choice of they want first or second. I'll let the teams know, but we saw the draft last time. Ascended was rocking Snorlax, Cinder, Blastoise, Hoopa, Espeon. She's had Mamo, Dodrio, Eldegoss, Azumarill, and Glaceon. Snacks, do you think we're going to see a lot of shakeups, or do you think teams are going to stick to what feels comfortable? Um, My two cents here. Mm-hmm. Was Overlord's Blastoise bad? No, of course not. He's one of the best players on the planet, no doubt. And anybody out there knows that I'm a huge, huge fan of Overlord. But put that cat on one of his mean machines. Like <laughs> put him on the put him on the Zarina, even the Azumarill. Get him going early because I've I I, I can't remember the last time, and this is no joke. I can't remember the last time I watched a game and Overlord wasn't the highest level at five minutes. Right. <laughs> despite being the top path player, and. Yeah. And whether it was the composition, whether it was uh, Blastoise struggling to get out, maybe they hadn't, uh, you know, tuned the engine on the old Blastoise. I don't know. But I I'm saying you get that kid. I mean, they had the choice to choose uh, choose him Serena. Serena, you know? Yeah. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that's a difference maker. And that's a Pokemon that she likes to have in their pocket too. So um, yeah. that's a good one of those. Feed somebody on your team uh, a powerful weapon and take one away from your opponent. That's the type of pick that uh, uh, Zarina is to me. So we'll see where they go, but that's just my quick hit analysis out of the gate. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I like this shakeup from Ascended already, banning mm -hmm. the Dodro. They also immediately went to first pick, so they know they're going to be getting either Sableye mm -hmm. or Blissey. In this case, yep. it looks like they are going to be getting Blissey because she's is going to ban Sableye for their one ban mm -hmm. of the game. See, that's what's amazing about first pick, or excuse me, first ban, first pick, because you can have a pointed ban to the other team and force them to give you something good. Mm -hmm. That's why it's currently the best in season two of Unite Mike's Mayhem, in my opinion, and why a lot of teams have selected to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, she's just going to get uh, two picks on the hop here, so they will get Mamoswine if they want it, and then uh, maybe just, maybe like, the this is where the Zarina comes in, you know, and you put Mazo and Zarina, that's something we've seen them do here in this type of switch up, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, she says a lot of options. We saw Buzzwell last yep. time, so I'm always here for the big book. <laughs> it's nice to see Blissey on uh, in the Thea Sky room. It's not going to lie. I feel like we haven't seen that in quite a bit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we haven't seen Blissey mostly because it's been banned so often. <laughs> but I think it is uh, it is an absurdly strong Pokemon. It works very well into a lot of the other meta picks. I mean, it feels it's the best support and the best tank all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of power level that you need to be watching over when Blissey is a part of the game. So Blissey finally enters the game, <laughs> makes it out of the ban phase for the first time in a while, might be the biggest uh, proponent of making us think we need two bands for this game. <laughs> the fact that Blissey yeah. keeps showing up. <laughs> yeah, for sure. She's is also one of the teams that's most uniquely suited to actually tackle, like through their just natural pocket picks, to mm. tackle something like a Sableye. So maybe that would have been worth banning Blissey and letting Sableye through since uh, Gizan plays that Glaceon very, very well and moves around very, very well. Uh, Might have been something to consider, but uh, She's knows what's up. They're going Mammoth Swine. They're going Snorlax. They're going <laughs> big bodies. They're going bodyguards, offensive line type levels here. They're going to be looking to square up some pancakes. That's that's what I'm where that's the stat line I'm going to be checking. <laughs> See, this is the strategy I was talking about. The double tank build in Unite right now is a underrated build, in my opinion. Especially, I think it works very well in draft mode, of course, because you can uh, you kind of set the precedent early on in draft. Uh, we're taking these. If you want to contest the tank level of game, you're going to have to find some other way to do it. Now, they do a Blissey. Uh, Mime, of course, can fill a similar role to something like this on Sheese. But if they get the Eldegoss as well, Sheese is going to be an immortal team when it comes to two minutes. Uh, if they get their hands on another, you know, team-oriented support Pokemon like uh, like the Eldegoss, potentially mine, but mine is more of an individual supporting tank, uh, unlike Eldegoss, who can, you know, one of the only Pokemon that can realistically help your entire team instead of just the pocket. Without a doubt. Um, I would love to see Ascenda uh, take uh, Serena here and just have like a super mutant up front with those two chunky Pokemon just stomping as the day is long with some Blissey support. I think that's a great recipe for success. I mean, you and I have had the privilege of casting the Pokemon Unite World Championships, and there is nothing that goes together like Slash and Overlord. And uh, they're <laughs> looking to have that peanut butter and jelly combo here on Thay Sky Ruins without a doubt in the yeah. face of She's, especially now that they're down a game and She's has one to give. Yeah, yeah. this is the time for it as well. I, I think this is where you lock in the Serena um, for Overlord. Immediately grab that Pokemon. Y you mentioned Slash and Overlord synergizing. That is true, uh, but the same fact also applies to just Blissey and Serena, one of the best sure. combinations in this game ever. Uh, Bliss assistance onto a Serena is a absurdly strong mechanic in the game. The knockups that it provides allows Serena to still stay within range of any Pokemon that would have some kind of escape tool and immediately shut those down. So Ascendant has some choices to make. Certainly, you don't want to give away uh, some of your more comfortable picks for someone like Elo or Jungle Book either, but I still think you want to grab one of your hard carries here in your second wave of picks. I honestly, right now, wouldn't mind seeing uh, Zarina mime <laughs> and just okay. going beef up front kind of like counter beef right because then you're just giving like super sustain to uh to to old zarina and then they can literally stomp as the day is long and yeah those hp hp pools are deep but zarina can uh, lay in some pretty thick cannonballs empty that thing out 
Yeah, <laughs> yes, that is true. Um, of course, it also shuts down Gs if they want to try to get any more speedster-esque Pokemon onto this roster, like something like an Absol. Even the Glaceon that you can surely accept coming in the um expect, sorry, coming in the next wave of picks for Gs, I would imagine, is uh, a Pokemon that you could try to shut down. Serena into 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 Glaceon is not the best matchup for Serena, but still mm -hmm. Serena can just kind of outright win a lot of 1v1s if given the right player behind the sticks, so uh, we'll see. Well, I was, uh, we have saying I said it had a lot of options. They are going to stick to locking in the comfort picks and those players we were talking about. It's another Cinderace and Hoopa pick for Ascended locking in Jungle Book and Elo's picks. Okay, so that leads me to believe that out of she's we might right now see the like Zarina Glaceon picks back to back. Ooh. Um something along those lines. Well, yeah. I mean, I would love the Zarina pick. However, I think they probably go to a Zoomeril because they've just shown more True. of a, yeah, a, fall, more of a yeah. default to that. However, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If it's just straight up a BM Zarina pick, I'm all for it. So I, I think it would be a I mean, really good option. But so yeah. one thing that, should, if you recall, is that surprised, surprised you and I out of week one was she's his ability to have very minimal range, but all like ridiculous escapability and ah, sustainability. That is so um, true. And, and that was like Gizan was the longest range character they had in Glaceon and everybody else was knuckling up up front. Mm -hmm. um, and they were be, they were able to avoid Dodrios. They were able to avoid Delphoxes uh, in, in their matchups with relative ease despite having to fight face to face. So, I mean, you know, she's going to, uh, uh, you know, literally Azu's Arena Glaceon is <laughs> not something we haven't seen them do and something that, you know, they've, not, uh, you know, kind of made me a believer in. You know, when you look at it on paper, it says, how does this work? But then you factor in individual skill and survivability and you're like, okay, well, that's how it works, right? <laughs> they just dodge everything. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that is true. If you just dodge everything, the, um, that orientation of play is also going to take a lot of teamwork to make sure you're always playing for vision. You have intel of where the threats of a senator are coming from in the first place, so you know how much space you can take, how much you have to give, those kind of things. That's always going to be a uh, an important choice. Well, I think uh, we should be getting a raise, dupes next. Glaceon, Serena are the next two picks. I have the largest brain on the planet. Where, where, where Second somewhere... only to mine, but yes, correct. It's true. <laughs> My, mine, mine just has more, uh, what's it, more wrinkles, which means I know more stuff. Uh, that is true. I yeah, will not disagree. <laughs> Anyways, that being said, she's not surprising us here. <laughs> uh, grabbing the Glaceon, which is a, definitely a key component when they're doing this type of lineup. Yeah. So she's is going to be happy with Azumarill. They're going to be happy with something also, even uh, to the ranks of uh, Buzzwall, Mr. Mime. Um I would probably lean closer to Zoomerol, Buzzwool, something. Hell, maybe we'll even see a Delphox. Who knows? There's so many good options with she's, <laughs> but it's Ascended that's on the chopping block here, and it's time for uh, for Overlord um, to get themselves a Pokemon. Yeah, it finally is time. What does Overlord get to play? And what has Toon got cooked up, you know, for their Pokemon selection is another yeah. choice that we have to be thinking of. The Espeon looked good in Path. I mean, we saw Salto held down to a extremely low level uh, in that bottom path mm -hmm. at the start of the game. We didn't get too much camera action on it, but we know that for a fact Espeon was putting in work, stealing a lot of that early farm. So the early power spike doing them a lot of favors early on in the game. So... Definitely a pick that we could see a repeat of. Uh, Delphox, probably not for Ascended. I just I just don't see it. Uh, I don't see mm -hmm. it working in Path. You want to give Cinder that central immediately. You got to make it happen. Um, basically, you're trying to answer the question of what works best into Serena out of your options that you have on the top path. Uh, Lucario, it, like a pup Lucario, is something that could be a decent option. Um, yeah, you're kind of limited otherwise, though uh or she yeah. Do? <laughs> I mean, yeah i mean that's a big question mark okay you know? well here uh <laughs> i oh, don't think anyone would have question. expected this uh the answer to that question is garchomp uh is going to be the pick Jeez, for ascended okay. as well as the mew pick for tune i i like the mew pick a lot a lot into the composition they're trying to play i think Mew plays into mamoswine snorlax incredibly well also one of the only pokemon that can sh uh chase down and shut down glaceon Garchomp something else entirely. Please uh, feel free to put in your wrinkly brain analysis onto this one. 
Yeah, my wrinkly brain analysis is you have one of the best players in the world that says they want to play uh, Garchomp. So you say, okay, Chief, uh, line, line it up, lock it in. Um, also, you know, credit where credit is due. Yes, the Blastoise uh, had trouble getting off the ground, but Elo and Overlord were working very, very well in tandem in that top path and really mm -hmm. kept it from going sideways too early, despite uh, the higher level of scaling that they need in the face of the opposing two players. Yeah. Um Maybe they're just looking to say, hey, look, we just got to clean that up a hair. You know, we did good. <laughs> we kept it. But we 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 need to go with the bend, not break attitude um, and not let ourselves get buckled in an Azumarill sliding through, taking our berry and then turn to fight on his head. You know what I mean? <laughs> so Lucario yeah. wrapping up for she's uh, I presume Falb's going to be on that uh, just off the cusp just kind of taking a look at everything um but two very unique lineups here certainly yeah. uh, ones we haven't seen and i'm excited even she's thrown in the lucario that's a new look for us yeah i yeah lucario for she's is interesting where it's going to end up i i assume baby malza will be taking the role of serena and going to the bottom path when we saw them play buzzwell that is what they were doing as well mm -hmm. so that would make a lot of sense to me uh, to be the direction of play for them, whereas Lucario will be played by Foul, but in the top path. So Azumarill plays very similarly to a power-up punch Lucario, so we'll see how it plays into them. Garchomp into Lucario is going to be kind of the question you have to start asking. Yeah, w without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, you know, she's is going to really have to try and take over with an early advantage, right? Split that central area between uh, Mazo and Gizan, let them run roughshod into those paths and put such an oppressive lead that it prevents Ascended from being able to climb in when they do hit their high-level power spikes in Garchomp and Cinderace. Yes, absolutely. Um, could not agree anymore. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, those power spikes are going to be very necessary for Ascendant to hit. Also, the melee that uh, range that Sheesh is going to need to enter is going to be a tough one to do when you have to face mm -hmm. a Garchomp in that area. So uh, just the melee prowess of a Garchomp will be an asset that Ascendant could try to use. So glasses, uh, scope, shell bell there for Giz, and we're taking a look. Sato not stacking. Oh, yes, double stacking. I'm sorry, missed the attack weight there. Um, Lel picking up the Snorlax, no surprises. Falb on Lucario, of course. Looking back the other way, Slash on their pocket pick. Elo on their pocket pick. Toon, who's just an absolute mutant on yes. Mew. Straight troglodyte on that Pokemon. <laughs> Looking real mean. Uh, Jungle Book on Cinderace, of course, and Overlord getting the dregs. Gonna pick up the Garchomp and with that rapid fire scarf and say, let's go. Ugh. Absolute mistake to have no Drain Crown on it, but whatever. I'll have a talk with Overlord after this one. <laughs> um, yo, Gatlu, what's up in chat? Also, Gatlu being the strongest proponent of Unite Mike's Mayhem EU, still being the same time as NA, showing up to every stream. Clearly, they can stay awake to compete. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, all right, let's see how these two teams play. A lot of reliance on that melee range, like we talked about Shades doing, but we talked about it as well. They are well prepared and um and just know how to play around that supposed weakness extremely well. Ascended going with a bit more of a well-rounded composition. Garchomp playing front and center. Slash can trying to soak up damage. Whereas Mew and Cinderace will be the damage cannons from the back line. They have options for sure. More well-rounded versus just brute force. I'm excited to see this happen in game number two. Yeah, we see Toon Slash going downstairs. Mazo and Salto going downstairs as well. Like you called it. Uh... Mazo wearing that new hollow wear, looking fresh. Yeah, I'm looking extremely fresh. I'm a little disappointed in the lack of Christmas hollow wear from our teams, but hey, I guess it is not quite. I guess it is not quite the actual holiday itself. Falb this time gets their first stack in. <laughs> Elo not getting the knockout, but that means that Overlord is already at the 13 Aos energy, so you know they have been getting a lot of early knockouts. They are cruising in terms of experience. Yeah, they're not stacking. They're just looking to take wild Pokemon. Here we go. Overlord's getting tons of pressure. Huge Astonish by Elo. One of the best supports going here. And that's exactly the type of support Overlord's going to need early in this game to be able to leverage that beastly endgame Pokemon. Uh, great coordination there by those two world champions to play around. Of course, the Astonish Sand Attack from the Garchomp to block that Glaceon move to make sure they didn't take any slowing, freezing auto attack damage. Salto slowing down the enemies, but does get knocked out of the process there. And of course, thank you so much to Spragles for the gigantic raid of 148. What's up, Raiders? Welcome to Unite Mike's Mayhem Finals of Season 2, baby.
Yeah, we have Sheez versus the World Champions Ascended. They're putting tons of pressure on Elo and Overlord holding down that goes on pretty well. Fab is getting low, but they're going to stay pretty safe unless they get astonished like that. <laughs> they dart away and the chip shot sorts them out. They overstayed their welcome and Elo, the astonishing magician, sorting it out with Hoopa. <laughs> Auto attacks being the sure hits that they are too much to deal. We have an attack weight mammo on our hands, so we're going to see a lot of early stacking come up from Salto, or at least the attempts thereof. A solar beam to the face makes them have to completely retreat, not contest any more farm. But Overlord getting greedy, eject button into the Baron to try to take this fight, but Maso is going to go down for their insolence. Oh my goodness, I thought there was no way Overlord was making out of that, but they re-engage, they get it done, and Elo with the great support again, getting it done for them as well. Here comes the book, finally the library's open, the books are getting checked out, and they're checking into the she's face, and they're getting it sorted, getting a KO early, now rolling downstairs, and she's kind of on the back foot. I, okay, Brett was saying in a chat, I honestly, it is kind of nuts. We are seeing the auto attack boost from Trick as well as the rapid fire scarf onto a fully stacked auto attacking Gabite. So the combination that Overlord has for just insane auto attack damage is popping off already in this early game. Level six, Glaceon's a tough one to try to chase down, a little bit too much damage, but they are gonna force back Lil and fall up into their area, but too much damage for the three members of Aziz, and they are going to defeat them and guess this Gore Skull here. Yeah, and of course, being able to pick up that berry for Lel and deprive Elo of it keeps Elo from being able to re-engage and play too far forward. We see that Bone Club sitting for Fob. They had the opportunity to jump back on an Elo. Toon Slim putting the pressure on Mazo, who's holding down that goal zone all by themselves. And they're all over this basement red ice trying to sort it out as three players are there. And I'm not too sure the Serena can make a play. But of course, South Elf, they were there just a hair earlier. We know they like to get into that action. <laughs> now it's Lel and Fob trying to get points in early and Elo trying to hold it down unsuccessfully. A uh, small score from Felb, not a huge overdunk by any means, uh, uh, but they are holding the points lead by quite a lot, and the Regilecki is going towards tier 2, so things working out very well in the points direction for their side. The only problem they got to deal with is a level 10 Jungle Book already, whereas the highest member are only at 8 on the side of Sheez. Jungle Book clearing every last wild Pokemon. Cinderace is clear, best in the game, we've known that for a long time, and it's popping off already. Somehow, uh, she's finding good opportunities with these teams as they escort that Regilecki all the way to the goal zone, and the Snorlax gets all their points, and Hoopa gets the KO credit for that as Mazo's looking to make some moves. They're level 8, and they're trying to move on Jungle Book. Jungle Book looking to engage, though, and just literally just desperately trying to get their points in before they get KO'd. Here comes Overlord. Jungle Book closes the book on that. Story over. You're back to base, son. <laughs> Listen, stacks were hard in the bottom path, all right? It was a tough it was a tough path to push. They heard the rumor, stacks were easy in the top path. They made it up there. Regilecki made it free. They pushed in and got the stacks. So sometimes you just got to end for it. They get it done. Eight energy, worth it, I suppose. Overlord going a 1v3 situation. Unite move coming up from them. Glaceon returns in kind, but Overlord is still carving it up. Yeah, KO streak of two and the berries to boot. Mazo forced to retreat and ascended is all over this goal zone. They're smothering it down. Can they break it? That's the question. Bliss assistance roars through onto the book. Not afraid to pick up a couple of egg hula hoops there as they keep pushing forward. They get another KO. Two players down for Sheez. Finally, Overlord is down and it's all up to Lel to keep this goal zone alive and it looks like they survive for another day. A lot of Unite moves used to defend that goal zone, but they were also used on the offense of trying to break it. So pretty good trade when it all comes down to it for Sheez. Now they can actually have some room to push towards that bottom Reggie, whereas the side of Ascended is going to have a Hoopa Unite. They could play pretty far spread out. The only one doing that at this moment is Overlord. Instead, they're going to start the rip and see if they don't even have to spend it at all. Yeah, Salto is going to be trying to be the hero here if uh, they're paying attention. They're too far away. But, you know, with that Unite move, it would have been a great time to use it to try and get into that engage. Maybe a Icicle Crash, high horsepower, knock some folks off, and then rip through your Unite and hope you, you get that last <laughs> hit in. Anyways, that's the dream that I just had, Zoinks, but that none of that came to fruition here. He's kind of getting shredded by Overlord and uh, Elo, forced to retreat as Alel comes in for the support. Yeah. For the early game prowess that uh, she should have on paper or on this top path, they've really had a tough time headed into this guard shop. A Hoopa Unite brings up to the top. Sato trying to split the enemy team, but it really only isolates the Hoopa as everyone else is going to rotate up towards the Regilecki. It's getting brought down to extremely low in members of HP. 
Uh, Overlord engaging on South Out, trying to keep them from getting, but what that did is it bought time for Guizan to sort it out as the high horsepower pushed Overlord right into the Regilecki, and they're able to get the KO. Now, that Regilecki is going to the second tier goal zone, and they're going to see if they can make a push. There's four players there for Sheez, and the Zarina's babysitting the Mew. This is an opportunity here if they can get onto Book. Book is sitting on the goal zone, then engage on South Out. Here we go. There's the Unite move, chipping around to see if they can get it done. They can't. They get KO'd by the Blitzy. Guizan's getting low. Overlord gets just an easy back slap on them, sorting them out. Reggie Lecky's not going to hit, and she's intelligently goes to other places and only sacrifices two players. <laughs> but now scores are going to rain in for Ascenda. This goal zone is going to be going away unless Celta could do anything to stop it. Mammoth went passive. Maybe relevant here for the first time and who knows how long. 35 points in makes this goal zone onto five and a 45 point overdunk is imminent as Jungle Book loves the podcast that records every Tuesday at 9 p.m. EST. Elo doing good work on foul, forcing uh, a retreat out of them. That goal zone at three, so we're looking for a huge overdunk opportunity. Lel going to put it at one. Zoinks, as a Canadian, you have to respect it. If we go into duck at time and a hundo burger hits that thing, we've got the great one. We've got a Gretzky score, a 99, baby. Oh, I do love Gretzky very, very much. Uh, many childhood posters were hung in my room for that player. Uh, Stormlax taking a ton of damage, getting knocked out. Mammoth Swine still able-bodied and ready to contest. Regirock brought down to a low amount of HP, but the burn coming out of Jungle Book and company is just too much for Salta to even try to contest. Overlord finds a 1v1. They somehow were not able to win. Must have been a little bit rusty this time around Serena Glaceon getting the chase Overlord has to retreat and base if they want to stay up in this fight only 16 seconds of the final stretch you got to play this one a little safe Ascended posturing a little bit. They ca catch out Mazo. That's a huge ton of damage early before this Rayquaza hits the map. Gizan's kind of chunked as well, and so is Salto. Ascended putting the pressure on early, using that experience later. Here comes the Hoopa. It is unbound. They're putting the pressure forward. That's a big stun. The hype, the laser beam comes out, and Gizan is so low. They're not going to be able to take on anybody. And there's the engage by the Garchomp. They're trying to push forward. Gizan uses their Unite move to retreat. And Mew's getting chased down by Falb a little bit, but Toon's fine with this spacing. They can do a ton of damage. Mazo's looking for an opportunity here as the rest of Ascend is getting all into the face of Sheez. And finally, the Sheez folks start falling. Lel goes down. Three players down. The Mammoth Swine is down, and Ascended is looking good. Not a single player down for them yet. Mazo is trying to hold it for themselves, but it's not going to be a, uh, oh. good for them. It's a fruitless endeavor. They get KO'd, and that's the tune getting credit for that. Geeson, can you make a hero play? Nope, not today. You can get <laughs> KO'd, though. How about that? <laughs> yeah, no Queenly Majesty on Mazo's last stomp after the Unite move, so they did not get that immediate reset. We are running this one back. One to one is our scoreline headed into game number three. Oop. Hey, Garchomp, once it, once, it got, once it got moving, it was looking really good in there. I think it was looking good from the start of the game. I've never seen players play Gibble that well. Overlord made the little chompy boy exceptional, uh, even at the start of the game. Not getting a lot of knockouts, but staking away so much farm from the enemy team. You do not consider that Pokemon to be a great last hit securing one, but it did its job in spades. And I think the, uh, the early game went way better than it ever should have on paper, especially in the top path. Trick Hoopa from Elo definitely putting mm -hmm. in some work, which made Lel and Falb have to work so, so hard to do anything in that top path. Yeah, Ascended really hitting a stride there against She's. She's not really able to cobble it together too, too much. They did take some pretty clever fights uh, in ways to get some KOs and keep some experience uh, in their hands. As you mentioned, Overlord was kind of taking everything under the sun from them. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, they fell just a bit shy. And they went into that last team fight chunked bad like yeah. they they overstayed i uh, overstayed their welcome they showed up too early to the party yeah. and they got told to go sit in their car until it was ready to go they got dusted immediately with no real opportunity to to sway anything back uh into their favor yeah, that's true. And that early damage coming out of both Jungle Book and Toon, Electro Ball from Toon, a boosted auto from Toon as well, just meant that the split of the front line and the back line was too much for Sheez to deal with. So all Ascended had to do was defeat the front line first and then move on to the back line. It's exactly what they did and got the Ray and, of course, got this game number one victory. Yeah, I mean, the only player that was going in with full HP into that final fight was Mazo. And by the, right. by the time they looked up, ready to engage and use their Unite move, uh, well, everyone was gone. And a five-on-one, <laughs> doesn't matter how much sustain you have, uh, you can't sustain that. So, yes. good look by Ascended, good adjustments by them. Garchomp looked very strong laning with that Hoopa. And when you get to put some of your players on their best character, characters that they've won 
the Pokemon Unite World Championships with, <laughs> you're putting yourself in a pretty good spot. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, we know that she's has locked in their uh, position as first ban. So first ban, mm -hmm. first pick, what we're kind of considering to be the power draft position. Uh, so we'll see what they want to choose for their first ban. I believe the game number one, they banned the Blissey as the sure start did. of this game. But uh, they, of course, had to ban away the Sableye last one. Let's see what direction they want to take it here in game number three. I wouldn't be surprised if we just see Blissey go away. <laughs> yes, I I don't think we're going for any many surprises when it comes down to like our week number four, aka just our final situation. Uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing too too much of that. Um, while we're waiting for the players to get their draft picks in, I just wanted to give a quick shout out. Uh, we are crowdfunding the final prize pool for tonight. I believe I could take a look at what our current we are currently up to. Uh, we are currently up. To to 195 via crowdfunding then of course plus the 100 floor that unite max is providing we're at 295 dollars for the prize pool which is three times a normal mayhem night which is fantastic if you want to donate to the prize pool to increase the incentive for these teams just exclamation mark prize pool in the chat and, there we and one more thing while while we're at here while you put up the first band which is probably gonna be that blissey as we mentioned no, it's actually not it's not. What do we got? We'll we actually about. have Hoopa as our first ban. Uh, uh, so she's uh, with uh, a bit of a uh, call out there. A uh, bit of a face check into ELO. They are dealing with it way too much. They uh, they are going to be, um, you know, wanting to have a different look in that top path for game number two. Dodrio being yeah. the ban for Ascended. Yeah, and Dodrio's banning Ascended. Or excuse me, Dodrio. Ascended <laughs> is banning Dodrio. Um, so, I mean, we've got we've got the Blissey action. We've got the Sableye action. So we could see a world where um, one of those Pokemon end up on each team or, if things get real wonky, end up on the same team. Yeah, that's true. And now we have a choice, right? What power pick do you really want to move towards? She's wants that Blissey. Uh, I mean, also a fantastic pick. Take away mm -hmm. Slash's iconic Pokemon is... Uh, oh, man, they got Dupe Snacks come to Brazil. That's sick. You got fans out there. I love that. Let's go. Um, Blissey oh, shout out to Christian. She's ascended, choosing Sableye and Glaceon. We have counter picks <laughs> all <laughs> over the place in our game number three. So uh, Sableye and Glaceon makes sense because Glaceon with its sure hit is uh, one of the best ways to sort out a Sableye. Uh, when you got two of them, that really limits what you can do to counter it. Uh, so she's is going to be up against it here in a way to see how they can wrangle in that ghost goblin. But real <laughs> quick, while we're waiting for those picks, uh, emote initiative. If you subscribe or use your Amazon Prime sub to the Unite Mics um, Twitch channel here, obviously you get access to all our emotes, but we call it our em emote initiative. We donate all the money uh, that we get given at the end of each month uh, to a charity of our choice at the end of that month. Um, so know that your money or your Bezos bucks, if you're unlocking our emotes, is going to a good cause. We don't keep any of it. We don't profit off Unite Mics at all. So uh, please consider that so you can spam those emotes all over Twitch. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like the hashtag drama in the draft. I, I think that's a. I think that might be befitting of this game number three. Blissey pick from Sheets into the ascended selection of Galaceon and Sableye. I'm sure these teams are trying to reel are reeling right now in their own chats, trying to figure out where their team is actually going to go in terms of build. Blissey has, of course, a uh, pretty good avenues of build around around that Pokemon. Glaceon and Sableye, though, are going to be their own unique factors that they need to figure out who plays the Sableye where do you play it how much invade strategy do you really want to pull mm. off how practiced are you around that strategy it's going to be uh it's going to be interesting questions that Ascendant has to pick after choosing the Pokemon yeah my gut tells me um that Elo is going to be on the Sableye I think that's just an even swap right if you're taking away the Hoopa you open up the opportunity for them to pick that up uh Glaceon I can kind of see Toon picking that up uh for Ascended as well Really looking to get a huge powerhouse pick again for Overlord, whether that's the Garchomp, the Zarina, the Sword, <laughs> anything like that. Ooh, Ideally, you'd like to get the book back on the rabbit and then, you know, slash whatever Snorlax. <laughs> it's interesting since all of the uh, initial affronting picks, the, of course, the Elo ban, the Dodrio ban, the Glaceon selection, uh, we haven't had many of the iconic picks that we've kind of come to see a lot happening early on in the draft phases, namely 
no Snorlax, no Mamoswine. So the, the tanks have been pushed off a little bit. We are getting a tank selection, but none of those that I just mentioned. Mr. Mime is going to be locked in by Sheath, as well as Alolan Ninetales. We are in the weeds, folks. Yeah. <laughs> we have gone we have gone off-road. The car has broken down. We are using a machete, and we're chopping through the thick stuff now. We are in the jungle, folks. Holy smokes. Yes. Okay, this might be the most unique draft composition we've seen on Unite Mike's Mayhem Season 2 so far. Yeah, is, <laughs> that may be true. Uh, we've seen some weird stuff, but this is an interesting play. It really seems to be the most call-out kind of strategy we have seen so far. Now, reminder... She does have a Lola Ninetales, a damaging Pokemon in its own right, of course. However, because of how Aurora Veil vale works, <laughs> and if you are building that Pokemon in a cool down direction of held items, the tankiness that it can provide for not only itself, also its team, the damage reduction in that Aura Veil vale creation of space is quite strong. So Mr. Mime, Blissey, and a Lola Ninetales are going to be tough members for Ascetta to knock out. Yeah, and that Blissey is specifically a reasonable counter as well to the Sableye. Uh, okay. So along in tandem with the Aura Veil, uh, they have a real opportunity to catch this thing out. And if you've got the Soul Read like some of our Decidueye players of weeks past have, <laughs> uh, that's a good way to stitch up a Sableye real quick too. Just that's the true. 360 no scope into the just into the darkness and somehow clipping a Sableye for 75% <laughs> HP. Why not? Oh, man. Okay, well, I... I said we were the smartest people. We might need to retire. The next two selections from Ascended are Gardevoir and Wigglytuff. I am having trouble following this draft whatsoever. The tank selection is in on Ascended side, and it is another pink blob. Wiggly being locked in alongside Gardevoir. It seems like we're doing a speed run of all fairy picks in the entire game. Uh, so fantastic work. Both these teams chipping in for the fairy, fairy selections. Yeah, uh, we're kind of seeing uh shades of what ttv was doing yesterday which mm -hmm. is just a cc nightmare for the opposing squad here yeah. fortunately they have blissey which she shoehorns them into safeguard but safeguard only picks up one pokemon at a time and of course you can't just spam um safeguard on infinite cooldown right mm -hmm. it's 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 got a timer to it so you have an opportunity that you you stagger your cc and your engagements you can actually out pace the safeguard and still stun down the opposing squad you know giving them every status effect under the sun i'm actually getting already very excited to cast this game because i don't think it's gonna be huge damage outplays and mechanical skill dev we're gonna see a very technical game um due to these pokemon selections that we are seeing across the board so far it is going to be can blissey safeguard the correct targets can weekly get a huge multiple member sleep can gardevoir land a big unite is alolan ninetales using aurora veil correctly off a of cooldown did sableye's confuse ray gets cleansed who knows there's so many little mini options that being said we can also find out punch next time stuff. on dragon ball z yes exactly <laughs> exactly well you can also just punch stuff uh lucario is the next selection for she's uh who uh, fab was running the extreme speed version of that pokemon which is a mm -hmm. ton of fun to watch and they are also going to lock in the decidueye i like the 360 no scope get them yeah. uh so not too sure who on the squad's gonna pick that up i presume ah well mazo might be on the a9 right uh Giz Guizan maybe uh taking taking the Sidra but champ uh please so we're gonna see um we're definitely going to see Overlord on Machamp right yes no oh, quite no doubt about no it no question yeah that's maybe the Tune only on Guardi. thing I am confident in actually <laughs> I was so, gonna say Tune so on Guardi or Jungle on Book on Guardi I don't know oh yeah 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 um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh Gosh, this is, I mean, Ascend is throwing a lot of good looks. I guess uh, my heart of hearts kind of originally told me Glaceon would go to Toon, um, and then Elo on Sableye, Slash on Wigglytuff, and then, yeah, I guess that leaves the old book uh, to pick up Gardevoir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I they'll figure it out in the next couple of minutes, I'm sure, <laughs> as, they, um, as they try to fill into the lobby. Now, yes, these team compositions are wacky and wild. Uh, Dupes next, I'll ask you in a second, so don't feel left out. But chat, who do you think won the draft between these two teams? She's with a very front-heavy composition, but Alola, Ninetales, and Decidueye as their damage output sources. And then, of course, Lucario just doing its own thing uh, throughout the entire game. And then ascended with a very wacky technical build that 
seems to me a little house of cardsy. Uh, it looks amazing until it starts to topple. So we are going to need to see picture perfect play from, of course, I'm saying that about our world champions. So it definitely feels pretty good. But I'm saying pretty equal votes. Deuce next. Who do you think wins the draft of game number three? Um, who wins the draft of game number three is you and I casting and everybody tuning in at home because this thing is a gem. This thing is a gem on both sides. Come on, these are walking highlight reels of, of a draft here. Is this true. is a scrap. This is how you we promote Unite Mike's Mayhem moving forward. We snapshot this screen right here and we say <laughs> we got it in spades. That is true. Also, I just realized I'm not locally recording this game. <laughs> All right, game number three is going to start any minute now. Everybody, if you want to uh, want to know, the champion of this is going to be headed into our winner's match versus the winner of TTV and Clash, who are patiently awaiting the victor of this game to start their matchup. We have so much uh, epic Unite Mike's Mayhem content for you tonight. Without a doubt, I was trying to run a prediction into the put in the in the chat, so One I just did exclamation point prediction to see what. Oh, it's because it's slash. It's not exclamation point. Yeah, and even then, I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got this! I got this! I did it. Oh, my pre, I, I I have two previous predictions I've done, and both of them are just who you got. <laughs> which is what yes. i've written every a single time wild over in history yes that is true all right looks like we got that ready from the teams we're gonna be launching into game very shortly oh i'm so excited honestly we could be looking at a preview of yokohama from next year i cannot wait to snacks this is gonna be an incredible match it really is it really is i just seeing a, a champ on uh uh, on in the ruins here it's going to be a lot of fun uh, it's going to be a lot of fun and just yes. a lot of unique pokemon we've we've haven't gotten to cast too much this season so hey i'm all about that action yeah absolutely i could not agree more uh one fun thing is that uh you know how highlander works like there can only be one and then mm -hmm. you know it's a rotating title well I, kind of in the pokemon unite community there's something similar and i like to call it the machampion now there can only be one right there can only be one machampion that rules the twitter clips for that many weeks uh overlord has definitely been the resident machampion of the unite scene for uh long amounts of time so i do think that this could be a return to that form the critical hit build scopeland's attack weight muscle band no razor claw on overlord instead wanting a little bit more um rip potential with that muscle band passive of doing percentage health damage to those big objectives there you go. Now, I must say, I must say, Ascended's getting diffed on the Hollowware here a little bit. <laughs> um, sure. But the Hollowware doesn't spell success, right? She's looking flossy out here in the Thea Sky Ruins. Now they just got to deliver on that. <laughs> I, Slash can may have had to buy buy save life for this game i don't know <laughs> <We'll have to laughs> <see. We're here. laughs> all right so we do have a few answers to our questions that we were so desperately asking for Guizan on the alolan nine tails whereas uh decidui headed into the bottom path i have to imagine that mazo is taking up residency on our grassy owl tune on the ralts as a double moving through very empty bottom path as jeez has trying to defend their central completely from slash can Unsuccessfully, I might add, that Pokemon's got a red buff. Yeah, uh, it looks like Slash obviously picked up the Sableye. Uh, so, you know, Elo going to have to hold it down somewhere else. Maybe on the <laughs> Wiggly Top. Here we go. Hey, Jungle Book's so on the Wiggly, apparently. Uh, so What has happened? I, I, I See, I, these were why we were questioning things <laughs> at the start of it. I don't know. Uh, Usato pushing up very far. We haven't seen their Mr. Mime play too often. They've been a highlight reel on Mamoswine, but Mr. Mime locks up a pretty nice confusion. Does not get that last hit quite unfortunately. Greason taking too much damage for them mm -hmm. to escape. Elo and Slash comboing for a great bit of damage bursts there. Sableye not to be questioned in its damage numbers at all. You know what this is kind of shades of is ascended at uh, the World Championships when they switched into that kind of unique comp where Jungle Book was playing Greedent. Uh, oh, sure. Yes, yep. I suppose we could uh, we could count that one to be there. Uh, Falb gets knocked out. Elo's range damage is very, very strong early on in the game. Glaceon, just one of those huge early power spikes played very well by Elo. And Elo, a player that has played a multitude of roles as well. We have a few of those in the game. Nice call up by Salta with that auto attack. Uh, but just they have played range attacker on multiple teams. Throwback to 
Team Shiny, they have played uh, multiple roles and are capable of doing so. Yeah, without a doubt. And they're going back to shades of that as Mazo is trying to hold down this goal zone by himself in the face of three. Slash can going back into the opposing central there. Just could be a menace, of course. <laughs> and going to take that out from under the A9. No question. Going to keep scampering around. That's what the Ghost Goblin does. <laughs> I do imagine any Sableye player just has a constant snicker the entire 10 minutes that they play this game. <laughs> As I can only imagine that that is the most fun way to play this game. Gizen caught out, confused Ray, makes Mazo have to take an Alola Ninetales auto to the face. Gizen locked up in place. Great sing there by Jungle Book to lock, lock him up. Jungle Book playing this tank roll pretty well. That's another thing about all this crowd control, all these status effects that Ascended is throwing onto Sheez. That Blissey can't be everywhere. Yes. Not in the other stages of the game anyways. And we just saw that pay uh, dividends for Ascended as they were easily able to bully Sheez off those middle birds and take all that experience for themselves. Oh, here we go. we got a big time engage. A little Sing, a little Curlia <laughs> action. Going to get themselves a KO as Jungle Book on the Wiggly Tough with their floppy sun hat there, looking like they're going to the Kentucky Derby. As they're going <laughs> to screen out with a Sing, they're going to catch Mazo. are going to do tons of damage, leash them around. They get chunked, they get shot, they get buckled, and all the birds are going to go to Ascended. And Ascended, they're on one now, and they're feeling it. Yeah, Gardevoir and Wigglytuff really are a match made to heaven in some ways. Again, sleep, that sleep special condition halves your special defense, and Psyshock is going to carve through you if that is going to be the case. Another catch out here. Ascendant's early game just so, so phenomenal right now in this game number three. I'm, as it has been this entire series, yet another knockout, and this will probably be a goal zone break. Oh, it's going to be a goal zone break. They have tons of experience, and they're doing whatever they want. Jungle Book is level 8, and they're just in the face of Mazo, not letting them off the hook. And now she's is going to start getting on top of this red ice, but look what's, who's coming down. The Sableye and the Wigglytuff, the rip isn't fast enough, and that's a big-time sing going in, and they're trying to get in the face of Mazo. They're bullying them off, and Slashkin's going to be on the chase. Southtow's leashed to the red ice, and we're going to see what they can do, as they're just under half HP. Another sing's going to come through, but here comes the squad for she's They're going to try and get some KOs, and it's two down for she's as they're getting pushed away ascended has one player down and that's uh that's the big time glaceon on toon slim is there sent packing but look the dual work that ascended is doing scoring ton on top they're going to be breaking down here looking flossy zoinks yeah, another great play from Ascendant. Both Regis, they really have found another gear in this game number three. Overlord is, again, I, I always say this. This shouldn't be un a surprising thing anymore. Already at level 10, Jungle Book uses the speed given by Zane to cruise across to the Regilecki. That move doesn't go across a wall, but that one does, Overlord. Cannot get the second stack in. Power swap, giving too many little ticks of damage over. They are going to get knocked out, but still a 305 to 30 point lead this this early on in the game, Ascendant's on a different one tonight. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Ascendage like undertakered out of the coffin here in game two, and in game three, they're just powering up, looking up, do a little little choke slam, and then a tombstone in this thing. She's going to put a siege on the goal zone. Fab's going to try and hold it down. Book sings everybody down as they're just blasting. Bliss assist that comes from long range. Mime is uniting as well, but it's Fab that picked up that Bliss assist. Oh. Overlord's on the chase. A big time arrow chunks Overlord. She's still getting pushed back, though, as the Wiggly Tuff's leading the charge, and here comes a big time of Champion Knight throwing hands like It Man catching a whole bunch of players and there's the knock knock arrow getting it back the other way three players down for ascended and they had a pretty good engagement got a couple ko's for themselves but she's looks like to have taken the better half of that they did but they really need to start actually converting okay finally some points yep. rain in not a massive over duncan overlord and soon are going to combine <laughs> for some big knockouts that is a unite move utilization they're not going to have for this regilecki fight but they got the numbers everybody from she's immediately knocked out Giza has to rush all the way back playing ahead for intel i like it but with overlord in your face you cannot risk being that close to the team fight yeah, a little Toon Slim Thanos snap, and the only survivor was Giesen off of that when they pulled up with the Unite move, eh? They came through <laughs> with the harder level of wrench. Reggie Lecky now going to the face of Sheez and Slash Can. Again, just being an absolute pest. Call Orkin. They need to sort this thing out quickly because they're running rough shot all over your house, Sheez, and you need to take care of that problem. <laughs> no, 360 no scope. That's what I'm talking about. That's what's so fun about the Sidewai and Sableye, by the way. Sorry. No, no, it's true. It's very, very true. <laughs> Slash Can trying to push up onto the Sidewai. See that passive brings him up, but a great early safeguard from Lel to prevent the Confuse Ray from really being a problem. Unite move to prevent the Confuse Ray as Spirit Shackle comes up a little bit short, and there we go. The Shadow Sneak, the true anti Sableye tech, is there. Uh, two Pokemon are knocked out for uh, Ascended, but the Reggie <laughs> was secured by their team.
Toon, literally using their Unite move to get into the action, pick up a KO in short order, and of course get the Blissey as well. KO streak of two for them, and she's trying to score some points while, uh, you know, while Toon's so busy getting KOs on the other side of the map. Here comes Jungle Book, listening to see if they can get one back the other way. Jungle Book trying to hold it down in the face of Falb and Salto. They're putting a lot of pressure on. Here comes Overlord with that support, and that's tons of damage getting thrown into the gorilla, Mr. Mime. They're no, no man, no matter of hands putting in the face of this squad is going to hold that down as Falb finds Finally goes in and buys some time. Surprisingly enough, Sato was leashed and they're able to get that counter KO. Great support by the She Squad to make sure that Mr. Mime doesn't go down. A lot of time burned that uh, She's would probably rather be earning some experience. Looking at some wild Pokemon though, so great play from Ascended. Even Jungle Book going down there eventually did burn the candle wick, if you will, quite a bit. So 30 seconds left until the final stretch and Ascended has a gigantic lead. I think one of the first times in this game they're headed into the final stretch with a big lead because of Jesus' just constant scoring strategy they've had a tough time playing around that one yeah, they've really figured out the split push approach that Cheese has been using in the first two games and have been able to leverage that into a big lead of their own here. As now they're fighting all, of, all around those birds and Cheese is just desperately trying to catch up in this experience level. They're behind by just a hair. Ascending gets the Regilecki for free. Rayquaza is here and that Regilecki is going way downtown Zoinx. Oh man, and she can't even safely rip and flip, right? They have to save like Confuse Ray that could put and just end every single dream they ever have had. Toon playing very far forward. Looking to find a big fairy singularity. If they can land one, does snatch up a couple, but they're wiped out too quickly. Knock, knock for a lot of damage, but everyone seems to grunt away. Jesus is on the chase here. They need to convert on some KOs. Falb is, has a ton of HP left. Two players down for a center. They need to get another one. The book is low. Is the book going to make it out? Lel kind of thinking about getting on the chase, and that's sing by space. Oh. Toon is not going yet. Oh, huge engage. Are you kidding me? The snow globe makes it happen. Are they going to rip this thing, or are they going to go straight for the scores? They're going straight for the scores here. They're going to get 84 in the bucket, and that Slash going back into the middle. The request is getting shredded, but Mazo's low. They need to catch a reset, and they need to get back in this action. Slash can's looking for the KO. Blitz says this comes in just in time and gets the KO on Slash. There's four players down and now it's all up to Glaceon. Here comes Elo. They need a prayer here to get it done, but it's no, it's the Sidgewire that sorts it on. Elo goes down and now 205 to 470, or 472. They need everybody to score their points and it's Hundo Burgers and they need to be on the menu oh, in a big way. Lau needs to make it. They score 405 to 472. Another 100 goes in, but who has left? It's the Mr. Mime. 505 to 472. Are you kidding me? 45 seconds left. They just need the back. They just need to back and play some defense. Can they get another Hundo Burger in? 605 to 472. Did she's really just pull this off, Zoinks. A Spirit Shackle secures it. They played that from behind team fight so exceptionally well. They hunted down the targets one by one. Got a double KO on the bottom path. The Courage of Guizan pays off in a major way. Overlord getting brought down low. And now Ascended only has 20 seconds to try to regain their lead. That's almost nigh on impossible task. I've seen a four minute mile. I don't know if I've seen a 20 second comeback. <laughs> the chase is on as uh, Elo's trying to make it across the map. They're going for that goal zone. And the Mr. Mime's ready to hop on top of their head with a sick can opener right in the community pool. Bang. Elo gets chunked for half HP. Confusion Blast sorts them out. Lel is low, but it doesn't matter. Four players down for Sheez, but that point isn't going to go in. The time is up, and Sheez is going to our Unite Mike's Mayhem Season 2 Finals. Are you kidding me? Ascended, your world champions are going home. Oh, man, an exceptional game, a crazy draft to start things off, and then an even more exciting conclusion for those final two minutes. What a team fight at the end from Brazil going towards our finals. They are going to await the next game with bated breath, but such an exceptional game from them. A wonderful best of three, a really, really exciting game to cast and watch. I love this stuff. Overlord Machamp did look for clean tunes guardy was looking good but seriously the team play from she's there at the end was so so good too much for ascended to overcome oh me oh my are you kidding me she's down and out finding a way back in it taking an immaculate team fight in the center zoinks no if ands or buts about it they figured out the recipe to success and they executed without flaw as a unit and that's that's i mean that's what the ucs brings right teams that have been after it since day one playing together since day one that have that amazing communication that having that amazing ability that look and say yes we're down on experience we're down on levels but there's still a way to win with the composition we have they executed it they delivered and they got themselves a big time win against a big time team on the unite mike's mayhem stage
I love to see it. We're going to see more from this team as well as they are going to be playing in our finals. But we got one more game to have before that one happens. Do not go anywhere. More Unite Mike's Mayhem finals action right after this.